Good evening. Punk music is one of the best forms of music ever conceived. In fact, it may be the absolute very best. It is the type of music I find most comfortable with. It's the type of music I connect the most with. This type of music really has it done right. Punk music has a particular attitude which defines it. Punks are known for being brash, angry, defiant, rebellious, independent. even bitter. Some say punk is similar to sticking one's middle finger out at the side. Such is a classic metaphor for punk music. Punks don't like to be told what to do. Punks like to express themselves without someone getting in the way. Punk attitude is expressed in punk appearance. Punk hair is very unique. Punks often spike their hair. Often it's spiked in positions that make it very difficult to lie down. You have to wonder how some of these punks sleep. Punks also dye their hair. Sure, lots of people dye their hair, even cosmopolitan and glamour readers. There's a key difference. When punks dye their hair, the hair is dyed in unnatural colors. When natural colors are used, the shades of the colors are unnatural. Punks officially dye their hair green, purple, and pink. Nobody has this hair color. Punks also dye their hair dark red, dark orange, bright yellow. Lots of people pierce themselves, especially these days. It's not uncommon to see people with earrings. Punks making them look very raw will pierce their ears with clothes pins. Looks very tough for one of those through your ears. Punk clothing is very distinct. One of the most common clothing symbols of punk is a black leather jacket. Black leather jacket has long been known as a symbol of toughness. The very image punks want to convey. Punk dress is generally very casual. The song Nine to Five World by the Ramones says it's not my place in the nine to five world. The punk dress guarantees that there will be no place in the nine to five world for punks. Jeans are often worn, sometimes slashed, sometimes not. They're t shirts with messages. Sometimes the messages are made by punks themselves. The clothing can be new, or it can be old. It can be rugged in appearance. It can be frayed. Punks are not abiding by rigid fashion conventions.
over the years, punks have changed. Punk music has developed. Thus, there are two main types of punk music. Old school punk and new school punk. Old school punk is what is most quintessentially punk. The look is a stereotypical punk look. Dye hair, leather jackets, spiked hair. The music is very fast, loud, harsh, raw, angry. There's often not too much melody. By new school punk, maybe less harsh, less raw, less loud. New school punk may have more of a melody. The lyrics of New School Punk may be more sophisticated, certainly not as raw. The look is ever different. New School Punks may not look punk at all. Bands such as Bad Religion look like just a bunch of regular Dudes, except maybe an occasional leather jacket. In fact, the lead singer of Bad Religion, Greg Graffin, has taught at the university level. I don't believe old school or new school punk are necessarily better than each other. Each has its time and place. Sometimes I want to listen to old school punk, sometimes new school. Sometimes sex pencils are a minor threat to old school styles. Get the spot right. And other times, bands such as The Offspring or Pennywise get the spot just right. One of the best developments the punk scene has been the development of melodic punk. Melodic punk combines a solid rock melody with the rhythm and beat of punk music. To me, this is one of the greatest combinations in recent American history. It's almost divine. When you combine these two elements, you create a truly remarkable form of music. It's hard to beat melodic punk. You can harm the melody, but you also have enough drive to really get rocky. Bands such as Nerf, Herder, Bad Religion, Noah, Bex, Pennywise, Amazing Transparent Man, and Lagwag are some of the top melodic punk bands of our day. very inspirational energy. You are inspired by the performances. You can tell punks are not just going through the motions, but instead are engaging in you know, the labor of love. When you really want something, it's so easy to be good. It's so easy to make it better. Punks do this all the time. The energy, the passion, motivates us to be glorious and happy. Whether expressed in a live concert or through an album, it's hard to beat. 
oddish, genuine punk music. In fact, one record label says it just wants hard-working punks. That record label, Spring Man Records, is to me, in many ways, the exemplification of the wonderful virtues of the punk rock culture. The record label was started by a young man who wanted an independent label. The label's not possessive of its bands, but instead is happy for bands that finds better deals, greater opportunities elsewhere. The record label sounds very cheap to ease. In fact, you can get a compilation of great bands for just $2 a piece, postage paid. The record label cannot be making much on this. The record label has a slogan which is no racist, no sexist, no homophobe. The label will write you back a letter if you write it a letter. This is true as I have done. I've gotten a letter back in return. contains lots of useful energy. In punk, age doesn't matter as long as you got what it takes. Some of the respected punk bands are old, some are middle-aged, some are young. And all is welcome. It is very punk to be independent in the labels. Punks consider themselves true punks when they avoid corporate big labels. In fact, some even go as far as suggesting when bands sign on to big labels, they are selling out. Certainly, it's great to support small labels whenever possible. These people are struggling to make ends meet. These small labels full of artistic integrity deserve our support. I love to support small labels whenever I can. The punk scene is awesome in its down-to-earth nature. Punks are not elevated like demigods, but are treated like real people. This two-way connection between the fans and the bands is both unreal and real at the same time. So few others, other music cultures, will do this. There is the strict connection, the strict division, other bands find themselves too important. Punk bands rarely have egos because they know what's important. The cost of punk performances is so wonderful. It is not uncommon to find single digit dollar admission fees for punk. So, even in light of a band sometimes, even shows for the preeminent bands of the day. No effects for one, although it is one of the leading punk bands is known to have cheap concert admission fees. The band could probably sell tickets for more, but he doesn't want to alienate the fan base, who may not be the more wealthy, who doesn't deserve to pay more. Imagine going to a Metallica Dave Matthews band 
a Britney Spears concert for single digit dollar admission fees, not on your life. These other stars are way too big for their own good. They are way too important for their own good. When the force of Mungus can afford pump as a form of entertainment worth every cent of the dollar, then the scene is truly awesome. Just as Springman Records says, no racist, no sexist, no homophobes, the punk scene is very tolerant, very open. For example, the Positive Youth Foundation put out what is called Stop Racism compilation. Many bands came together to create albums saying racism is wrong, diversity is right. Great compilation. Women are welcome in the punk scene. Many bands have punk members. Bands such as Tilt are led by women. Bands such as the Eyeliners and Fabulous Disaster are exclusively female. Homosexuality is also quite okay. Bands such as the Queers and Fabulous Disaster are top punk bands which promote homosexuality. The whole punk scene is beautiful for these reasons. Spring Man Records is a very visible example of all these prime virtues. I can't help but be attracted to punk women. Women can be punk in appearance, attitude. Some women are merely punk in the way they look. This is not as deep as one would like it to be, though your eyes attract it. Other women are punk all the way through. It's interesting because personally, I don't believe in dyeing my hair. I don't look punk. In fact, I look like another subculture. Punk women are just some of the most attractive women out there. Along with women who skate, punk women are a major turn-on. For much of my life, I did not know what fish net stockings were. In fact, I just recently really found out. I did not know they even existed. I think they are way cool for women to wear. It would be bad if someday I could hook up with a punk woman. What a beautiful thought. Some punk bands play a central role on politics. Bands such as the Dead Kennedys, Propagandi, Anti-Flag, Black Flag, DOA have as a central mission a political agenda. Papa Gandhi in the interview even said its lyrics are more important than its music. 
It described its song, Let's Talk More Rock, as being a slam against individuals who listen to music just for the beat, even when the lyrics may be something they're totally against. The song is directed toward jocks who like loud, fast music. The song has pro-homosexuality lyrics, which many of these jocks would naturally not like. Other bands dabble in politics here and there. No effects notice that it's not known for being a political band. It said maybe that should change. The band has become more political as of late. The recent album, The War on Arianism, makes many political statements specifically about the Bush administration. That might, of no effects, and that records, put together two CD compilations, Rock Against Bush, one and two. Many bands from Fat Records and other labels came together in these efforts in order to protest the policies of the Bush administration and hope for change. That might also create an initiative known as punkvoter.com. Punkvoter.com strives to get punk involved politically. Observers realize many young people don't vote. Thus, efforts to get young people involved are admirable. Punks have a great audience in their fans. Punkvoter.com really wants to defeat George W. Bush. It wanted John F. Kerry to be the next president. Fat Mike said, yes, the Democrats suck, but suck less than the Republicans, therefore we should vote for them. Fat Mike's solution was to register Green and vote Democrat. Voting Democrat, especially for John Kerry, is in my mind something punk should not do. John Kerry is not in any way, shape, or form punk. He does not embody the great values and virtues which truly make punk excellent. It is not punk to vote for either of the two parties. It's punk to vote third party. The Green Party is not the only third party out there. In fact, I don't even consider it the best one. We should vote for other third parties. We don't have to be left either. To me, true punk would transcend leftism. But it does not often do. Pop punk is considered abominable and horrific to some punk. Pop punk is a softer type of punk which involves some elements of punk along with elements of pop music. It is often at a slower pace it's very catchy. The lyrics often deal with less serious matters. Even love and romance. Some believe punk should not be dealing with these. I personally like pop punk music. I wouldn't want to listen to exclusively pop punk, but it's a nice addition. Poppunk.com has a deal where you get a grab bag of CDs for just $5. It takes a little time to get to you. For some reason, it takes a while. But 
that is a good deal. Also, it has a CD compilation called Pop Punk Fever. For six dollars, you get exposure to some of the top pop punk things of the day. Nice Guy record also has a CD compilation. Nice Guys finished last. I recommend both of these for anyone interested in pop punk music. I have both of these in my CD collection. Pop, pop punk is something we should keep. We shouldn't believe it's the only type of punk music, though it's the most accessible. We should believe it is a nice addition. There is a slogan that defines punk music. This slogan is DIY. Do it yourself. If punks want to produce music full of what they want to express, the style they want, they don't just wait for a major label to accept them. Such may never happen. Such may take a long time to happen. Punks would rather create their own independent label, do it themselves, be true to what they believe in and have some major label take control, do it the way corporate world wants it done. Punk would rather punk be a form of art rather than a commodity, punk say. Dead Kennedys have a great song called Anarchy for Sale, which the band says, others say, is a slam on the commercialization of punk. The punk fans want to write about the music, write about shows, write about albums, write about the bands they love. They don't wait for some publishing house to create some slick and glossy magazine. Punks do it themselves. The parents may be more raw, but like most of punk, the content, the message, the heart is more important than the appearance. Zines are a great art form. Jello Biafra says he really likes zines because it's everyday people expressing themselves rather than big shots. Ever believes there's a special realness in everyday people express themselves. I have long written zines, it's wonderful. I much prefer to publish myself rather than have a big publisher publish. I love the control, although it may look better, you may have better distribution channels with major publishers. To me, the true punk essence is publishing yourself. When you phone copy your zine, refusing to have big publishers publish your zine, you are making a thousand Punks also don't wait for clothing manufacturers to manufacture clothing to their liking. Punks create their own fashion. Sometimes, Punks will wear work shirts. Work shirts often worn by mechanics, say Lou or Jim, are frequent. But punks have made such clothing a style. Punks also love to put patches on their clothing, on jackets or on shirts, maybe pants. Sometimes the patches are of punk fans, other times the messages which punks approve. One of my shirts, which I still sometimes wear today, has one patch saying that Kennedy's another patch with a swastika with a line through it. 
comes to either get a white shirt, a black marker, and create wonderful messages. I have made shirts like these for myself and others. I have written legalized polygamy. I have written straight edge messages, anti-alcohol messages, even anti-Shriner messages. For my friend, I made a shirt making fun of Lou Rockwell, libertarian pundit. I made one which said boycott urination. I made a message on a shirt which said my bladder is like a leaky faucet. The messages can be profound political statements. They can be hilarious and silly. Whatever the punk wants it to be. Punk music is one of the best art forms ever. I'm so glad to enter the world. It speaks to me. It connects to my soul. Punk music rocks. Good evening.